Hey everyone, my name is Katie and I am a third grade teacher in the state of Florida and I'm so glad you're here for today's video. Today's video is going to be super fun because it's going to be a combo of teacher outfits for fall slash winter and a Q&A. Before I jump into the outfits and the Q&A session, I want to say thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to introduce you a little bit to their brand and also feature a lot of their pieces and the outfits that I show you guys that I could wear for teaching or just out and about during this winter season. If you haven't heard of Lily Silk before, it is a clothing brand that focuses on sustainable and eco-friendly pieces. So if you're looking to upgrade your wardrobe, buying pieces from Lily Silk would be a great way to upgrade and all of their pieces can be worn in many different ways, which I'm going to show you in today's video. The Lily Silk pieces that I'm going to show you today are made out of silk and cashmere. They're both really, really high quality, very comfy and cozy but they're also very classic pieces that look good in a lot of different outfits. A couple of things that I love about the fabric that Lily Silk uses is first off, it's anti-allergen and it's not gonna irritate your skin. So it's definitely high quality and it's not gonna be itchy or irritating when you wear the pieces. Later, I'm gonna show you a really, really cute silk top, but they also have silk pillowcases and different silk items that are really skin friendly as well. I've had a silk pillowcase for a while that's a different brand, and I'm definitely looking into getting one from Lily Silk now because a silk pillowcase is very friendly on your skin at night, and it's also better for your hair because it's not as harsh. When you order Lily Silk items, you have the option to just get them in regular packaging or you can get them in gift wrap packaging. So that's perfect for the holiday season if you're looking to get a really high quality gift for somebody who loves fashion or just a staple piece for their wardrobe, Lily Silk is a great option. I'm gonna feature three different Lily Silk pieces today and show you how I would style them for teaching outfits and just for out and about during the winter time. Um, and I will link all of the pieces that I'm trying out in the description box below so that you can get them yourself. I would also encourage you to check out their website because they have tons and tons of cute pieces. So without further ado, let's take a look at how I would style some of my Lily Silk clothes. The first item I'm showing is the pure cashmere turtleneck sweater in black. For this look, I paired the sweater with some high-waisted jeans. As you can see, it's not super thick, but I actually love the thickness of the sweater, especially for Florida. And I love the turtleneck option. I paired it with just some gold jewelry and then high-waisted jeans from Old Navy. And of course, my patterned snake booties to make it a little fun. Next, I paired the same sweater with a midi dress from Old Navy. I layered this sweater on top and then just kind of rolled up the hem like you see here to make it look like a top with a skirt. And I've actually worn this outfit to school already and it was super duper cute and very comfortable. The next item is a silk shirt in white. I paired the shirt with the same pair of high-waisted jeans and just did a tucked in look with some black booties. And I really like how it looked fancy but casual at the same time. Here's a good close up of the silk. You can tell it's a really nice bright white, very shiny, super smooth. I paired it with some dainty gold jewelry, a chain necklace, and some earrings. Next, I took the same top and paired it with a pair of black skinny high-waisted jeans and snake booties. It's kind of a similar look, but I like how it made it look a little more dressy. And I also played around with doing it half tucked instead of completely tucked in. And I liked how this gave it a more blousey effect up top. And that's how I would wear it with dress pants as well. The last piece is called the Gilly sweater and I got it in the color Sandstorm. When I say this sweater was soft, I mean it. It was very, very soft and I like the collar look up at the top. I paired it with those same pair of high-waisted skinny jeans and some black booties. Also played around with kind of doing it front tucked and I liked wearing it both ways. It's like a perfect combination of casual, comfy, and super cute. I think this one was my absolute favorite outfit of all six. Last, I paired the outfit with a pair of yoga pants and my Ugg boots to give it a nice casual look. While I wouldn't wear this one to school, I could wear it any other winter day and be really cozy at home. All right, so those are six different ways that I would style these fantastic Lily Silk pieces. Every time I finished trying one on, I would walk out and show David and I was like, oh my gosh, look how cute this looks. 
because I was just so excited. Um, so thank you so much again, Lily Silk, for sponsoring today's video. Again, I will link every piece that I got in the description box below, but they have tons of other cute ones too. I love all the like neutral colors and how I could mix and match it. And as I was like looking through my closet, there were lots of different ways that I could like continue to pair those with things that I already have. So I cannot wait to wear those this winter. In the description box, there will also be a code for you to get 12% off of an item. So make sure you check out the code in the description box as well. All right, so I purposely did this outfit last because it is the loungewear outfit. I took the Uggs off because it was a little toasty inside, but I'm going to shrink the camera down and get a little comfy cozy and get ready to start a Q&A session with you guys. All right, before I start this Q&A, I just wanna show you like the aftermath of all of that outfit drying on. Shoes, clothes, everything everywhere. So I'm gonna have to clean that up later. I also have jewelry laid out all over my counter. Um, I might have to clean that up later, but it's okay. Right now we're gonna do a fun Q&A. So I put a question box on my Instagram and on my YouTube for you guys. I love just doing these videos every once in a while, just to kind of sit down and catch up and answer you guys' questions. And um, if we're being honest, they're easy to film. Sometimes vlogging takes a lot of effort, but a Q&A is super easy. And it's just a fun way to connect with you guys as well. So thank you so much if you put a question in my box on Instagram or if you commented on my YouTube post. Um, because I love being able to answer you guys' questions and connect with you. All right, there was one question that was asked multiple times on Instagram and multiple times on YouTube. And of course, I'm gonna save that question for the very end. So you gotta stay tuned to see the most frequently asked question. But let's jump in to the first one. Somebody said, teaching is super hard. What do you do to bring yourself joy and stay positive? First off, amen, teaching is super hard. Second off, I think it's all about the people that you surround yourself with. So I really enjoy getting to know my coworkers, talking with them, remembering to connect with human beings, especially adults um, and not just kids is super important. But I've also been prioritizing like my home life a lot more this year. And I think that comes with experience when you're a new teacher, it's really hard to balance. But I think I've been able to just say like, all right, we're leaving school at school. Like I barely worked on any school stuff at home this year. I really try to get it all done at school. And if you're wondering how in the world do I do that, I have a video with my best time management tips. It's not perfect, but it's what I've started doing to help me kind of manage that better. And I will link it above for you guys. Um, but I also plan things during the week more than I did my first couple years teaching. Like we plan to have friends over for dinner. We have Bible study every Monday night. Um, we'll say, okay, we're gonna go on a walk this afternoon or we're gonna go get dinner with these friends this night. That way I have something to like look forward to during the school day too. And I started like coming to terms. I used to get like stressed when I had stuff to do in the evenings because I'd be like, oh, I'm not gonna get to bed on time. I'm not gonna wake up on time. And I think I've just kind of realized that I'm, my like mental space is so much better when I have that to look forward to and when I'm connecting with people outside of my job as well, if that makes sense. Um, also bringing myself joy is staying reading my Bible in the morning. So making sure I listen to worship music and staying in God's word helps me have that joy. All right, the next question, do you and David plan to get any pets soon? No, we don't. Um, this is actually kind of funny. My mom has the greatest dog in the world. We've had schnauzers growing up when I was a kid and I love schnauzers so much. We had a dog named Ranger and we loved him. And then my mom got a dog named Tucker and we love Tucker so much. So we love loving on my mom's dog. Um, but David always joked when we got married, he's like, I don't want to get a animal or a dog like right when we get married because then if we fight all the time we won't know if it's us or if it's the dog <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious but we just I can't come home and let a dog out in the afternoon like at lunchtime because of my job so I told David I was like if you're willing to let a dog out and come home and do that then great and if not we're okay not having a dog when we do get a dog we will get a miniature schnauzer um David wanted a big dog for a while like one day in the future and I was like no you want a schnauzer and now he loves Tucker so much so he we basically want to like clone my mom's dog and have that but not anytime soon honestly it probably won't be until we have kids and like one of us stays home more of the day because it just breaks my heart to lock them up you know um is there a chance you will be able to do a video on how your sticker store system things work okay sticker store in my classroom let me give you a little rundown on it I copied this from my team lead teacher I have a wheel of excellence here's a picture of it it's just a wheel with the numbers one through 16. And what I do is when a student is making good choices, they go sign their name on the board next to the number one through 16. When we fill all the slots, we spin the wheel and whoever it lands on gets a choice of three different prizes. They can either go to the treasure box, they can pick out a sticker from the sticker store or a coupon. 
Um, and it's been working good so far. I think in the spring semester, I'm gonna try to figure out some way to where we can spend it multiple times because when I started, I just said we spend once, but I kind of feel like we should spend it two or three times to give more kiddos a chance. Um, and maybe like do a bonus spin type thing. Like if we get a compliment, I put a tally up there and that means the next time we spin the wheel, we get a bonus spin or something like that. Some kind of whole class incentive to tie into it. But that's been working really well for my class this year. Um, next question is any travel outside of the country soon? Not in the works right now, but we've definitely toyed around with the idea of this summer maybe going somewhere and doing a fun trip, but I feel like that's something you have to plan way in advance. And so we should probably start planning that. And so if you have any recommendations on where we should go out of the country, leave those below for us. Um, Cause I would love to, David's never been out of the country and I would love to take a trip out of the country. It'd be so fun. Um, next question, I like this one. What has God been teaching you right now? Um, I think this one's actually pretty easy because my church has been studying the book of Ruth. And we really took like a big character dive into Ruth, Naomi, Boaz, and like all of their different character traits. And I think it was really cool because I think I was most inspired by Boaz and his faithfulness um, to Ruth and Naomi, but also his faithfulness to God. And so I think that's something that I've been learning about is how can I be a leader like Boaz was for the people and the men that were in his field? And how can I like leverage my influence and my leadership to point others to Christ? And also how can I make sure that I'm being faithful even when things are difficult? So in Boaz's case, he didn't really have any difficult or hardships going on in that exact moment, but Ruth and Naomi did, and they were faithful to each other and faithful to the Lord or even during those hardships. And so I think that's kind of what I've been learning through church and through Bible study as we're going through those scriptures is it's really challenging me to say like, how am I being faithful and what, um, like what steps am I taking to build my faith? Am I reading my Bible? Am I staying in the word? Am I worshiping? Am I staying plugged in at my church? Talking with other people about what God's teaching me like this. Um, all of those are ways to build your faithfulness to the Lord because he is always faithful to us. So I think that's what I've been challenged in lately. Um, next question is, how did you get started on YouTube? Any tips? Uh, I just randomly decided to start. <laughs> so this was in 2019. Yeah, 2019. I started with a like introduction about me video and a classroom tour and a decorate for Christmas with me video. And I, it's always been something I kind of wanted to do because when I was younger, my siblings and I would edit videos a lot and it was really fun. And I was like, you know, it would be really cool to do YouTube. And so I just, David was very encouraging and he was like, you like editing videos. It would be a fun hobby for you. So go for it. And so I did, I just went for it. Um, and it really started taking off later the next year during, I guess, was that my COVID year? No, it was after COVID. So it was like after a series of COVID and we had like a lot of hobbies with friends and then school picked back up. And I did a lot of like virtual creating for my school during that time too. So I think that like inspired me to do that as well. So it was like the year after the year we went home for COVID. That spring, my last spring of teaching in Alabama is kind of when my channel started to take off. Actually, it was a morning routine video that kind of blew up. Um, so my best tips, if you want to start YouTube, go for it because it's fun. But also remember why you're doing it because I do it because it's a fun hobby and I like connecting with you guys. It's easy to get swept away with, um, we're doing it for sponsorships or for money or for all these things, but um, it gets really daunting and annoying if that's the only thing that you're going for. Like, I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't wanna film a video, but then when I do, it brings me a lot of joy. So I really get a lot of joy out of doing it beyond just like being paid or making money on AdSense or whatever on YouTube. So I'd say go for it, make sure you know your why. And then tips post consistently is my biggest tip. Um, I've, I've only missed a couple weekends of uploading since I started my channel. I try to post one every Saturday and be as consistent as possible. And that's hard, but if you post consistently and regularly, that will help build your channel for sure. Um, anything else, I use Canva for my thumbnails. So if you're trying to make thumbnails and you don't know how, use Canva. And I use Final Cut Pro to edit. Um, and make sure you got a good computer and a hard drive too. I have, here's my computer right here, a MacBook Pro that I edit on and it's amazing. I used to use my old MacBook Air and it took forever. And then when I finally upgraded after having my MacBook Air for like seven years, we upgraded to this one last year, lightning fast. And I have um, a couple Samsung hard drives that I use. I just labeled it with my Cricut YouTube. This has all my YouTube stuff on it. So um, those are some supplies and get a, a tripod. Also, you don't have to have a fancy camera. This is like a long <laughs> explanation, a long answer. You don't have to have a fancy camera. 
I literally film all my videos on my iPhone 13 Pro. So there you go. And I have a tripod for my iPhone. I've toyed around with getting a camera, but I was like, is it worth it long term? I don't know. And using my phone is just so convenient. So you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment to get started. I literally had a $20 tripod. And when I started, I didn't have a fancy iPhone. I had like an iPhone 10, an old iPhone 10 and an old MacBook. So like you don't have to have fancy stuff to start a YouTube channel. Just go for it. Try it if you want to. And if you think it's going to be fun. Um, next question, classroom tour question mark. Yes, I will be filming one of those if you guys want to see it. Um, I haven't done one yet, so that would be really fun to do. Maybe in the spring, I'll do a classroom tour. I'm definitely not going to swing it in the holiday season right now, but I'll make that a goal for the spring semester. Um, do you do guided reading? If so, what does it look like? Uh, guided reading as in like um, reading recovery type balanced literacy? No. Guided reading has looked different for me in third grade than it was in first grade. So let me give you my first grade answer. My guided reading was explicit phonics instruction because we were turning towards science of reading. Also, shout out if you've never listened to the Soul to Story podcast, you should go listen to it because it's fascinating and it talks about the importance of that explicit phonics instruction. So go listen to that first off. Second off, that's kind of what my small groups looked like was like the explicit phonics. Let's break apart words. Let's map them. Let's read them in context. Let's decode flashcards, stuff like that. Um, third grade, it's more of, I do have a group that I'm working on fluency with still, and I will do a little bit of word study kind of like that, but third grade level at the beginning of the week, but then we switch into kind of working on our weekly skill. And actually I filmed a vlog. I don't know if it's up at this point or not. If it is, I'll link it above. If not, I'll go back and link it. But I filmed a vlog kind of explaining what I was doing in small groups and how I'm taking like the skill that we're using in whole group and I'm using like a smaller reader and I'm doing it at small group tables. So that's kind of what my guided reading looks like. I hope that answered your question. Um, maybe I can do like a better video of it in the spring, but it'll have to be in the spring because I'm still trying to like grasp third grade and grasp our new curriculum, if that makes sense. Okay, and here is the most asked, most frequently asked question. I think I got this question six or seven times, no joke. Are you liking third grade now that you're almost halfway through? Or did you like first grade better and why? And then also, is there any talk of you moving grade next year or are you wanting to stay in third grade? Everybody wants to know. Okay, so pros and cons. Pros of third grade, kids are way more independent and you can do a lot of fun things that would be really difficult in first grade. Like first grade, anytime you wanna do one of those fun cutesy TPT things, you have to have a lot of explicit instruction and modeling and step by step by step. And you have to look and think, can my students even read these directions or comprehend what this is asking them to do? Third grade, you can do almost anything on TPT, any fun activity, because they can read directions, follow directions a lot better than first graders can. Um, so that's definitely a pro. Something that I missed from first grade is I didn't think I would miss this, but I really miss teaching phonics and like teaching them how to read. Third grade is the year where they read to learn and we're learning comprehension strategies more. And that's been a struggle for me to like shift. I'm working on it. And my team members are like really helping me with that. Um, but I really miss teaching like that explicit phonics and just the excitement of learning how to read for the first time. So I really do miss that. Um, as far as moving grades next year, I don't know. I really don't know what next year is gonna hold. There may or may not be a first grade position opening at my school that would be kind of tempting for me, but also like I just spent a year pouring into third grade and getting invested there. So should I just like switch to first grade or would I? I, I really don't know. And I love my team right now. And I have no doubt that the first grade team at my school is fantastic as well. Um, so, I mean, it's been, I, it's been an idea. I'm toying around in my mind of like, should I approach my principal and ask about that first grade? Should I stay in third grade? I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely crossed my mind a couple of times, but I think it's going to take time to figure out what I want to do. And like, once I get more into the spring, I think I'll have more clarity on what I want that next step to be for next year. Um, but now that I'm halfway through third grade, I can honestly say, I feel like I'd be comfortable in either. So I feel, I feel like it's like both two good options and I just wouldn't know which one to do. Also like the first grade one, I haven't even been like offered a first grade position. So it's really just like a thought that I've been toying around with here and there. So to answer that question, there's pros and cons to each. Yes, there are things that I miss in first grade. Um, yes, there are things that I love about third grade. And no, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next year yet. So stay tuned for that. 
that's all I've got for the Q&A for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of fun to do like a combo of the outfits, like teaching outfits and the Q&A in one. Thank you guys for submitting questions. And again, thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. All of that information is still in the description box for you guys if you want to check out any of their pieces for yourself or get a gift for a friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe because um, I'd love to have you join my channel if you aren't already. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.